because I'm telling you, like, this is the one thing that will make you stand out. Like, you will just be noticed and known. If you Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kayla, and this is where we talk all about project management, startup, all kinds of fun stuff happen in here. And if this is what you're interested in, I would love to invite you to subscribe to the channel. And I also wanna ask you to please let me know what it is you're interested in hearing about. Because as the channel is growing, I wanna make sure that I'm staying focused on topics that are interesting and provide value to you. So please let me know what it is you'd like to hear about. Okay, on to today's topic. Today we are going to talk about how you can be a better project manager. Now, I know you're already a good project manager and maybe you're a great project manager, but I want you to be an amazing project manager. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm not gonna talk about how you can be better at Gantt charts or building a communication plan. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff here. We're gonna talk about practically what are the things that you can do to become that project manager that everyone wants on their project. That project manager that people seek out, the project manager that gets raises, the project manager that gets promotions. How can you become that project manager? That's what I wanna talk about today. I have three tips for you that have worked for me and I know they'll work for you too. So let's get started. Okay, my first tip is to learn about your project. Now, this goes beyond just superficially learning about the requirements and who the stakeholders are. That should all be happening anyway. What I'm talking about here is learning about the different aspects of your project that if you know more about, you will add value to your teams, you will help them deliver more effectively, you'll have more effective communications. What are those things you can learn about your projects that will help you in those areas? Now it's gonna be different for everyone because we all have different projects we work on and we all have different areas where you know we know as much or not as much as someone else. For me, I could say as a person with a non-technical background who tends to work on technical projects, I found my Achilles heel has really been in terms of technology. So anytime I'm on a project, I always wanna know what is the tech stack, what are the different software tools that we're using, and I go out and research. I have gone as far as taking a class on Ruby on Rails coding, which I failed miserably at, but it was actually really helpful for me because I had a different perspective and a point of reference that ultimately helped me in my communication with my team, with my stakeholders, and helped me deliver my project more efficiently. And also, you get a lot of respect for that kind of stuff. People will respect you when you show that you care, when you show that you're interested and you want to learn more. So if there's areas of your project you can learn more about, figure out what those are. Maybe you need to learn about an industry or a company or a product or like a software tool like me. Maybe it's something like that that you need to learn about. And there's many different ways you could do it. YouTube, free classes, paid classes, books, like all kinds of information out there. Figure out what it is and go out there and learn about it. Now, you should do this uh, close to the beginning of your project because as the project advances, you're probably going to get sucked more into project stuff and you won't have as much time to dedicate uh, to learning about the, the project itself or what is going on in the project. So I would recommend that you do this closer to the beginning. And also keep in mind that you don't need to be a subject matter expert. This is not at all what I'm saying. And in fact, I've done videos about this. You don't need to be a subject matter expert. Uh, it can actually sometimes be a detriment to the project if you are. So um, you just want to learn enough to provide extra value to your team. That's really what you're looking for here. However, I have seen it happen where people learn about different aspects of the project and they discover they have a new passion or like a new hobby pops up because of it. So that is also completely possible, which is a big positive that could come from learning more about your project. So that's my first tip. Learn about your project. That is going to help you stand out. It's going to help you deliver more effectively, and it will give you respect from the teams that you work with and just in your profession in general. 
Okay, tip number two is to build a network. And now I don't want this to sound like the cliche, you need to go out and network and have a network, which is absolutely true, by the way. But I want you to think more about uh, building a network for you personally as a project manager, almost like your Rolodex of not only people, but of tools, of books, of um, you know, different solutions that you have. Start putting this all together because as a project manager, especially if you're a freelance project manager and you're moving from company to company or team to team and you're working on different types of projects, you're going to see how all of this connects and it starts to come together. And if you can be known as the person who always has a solution, maybe it's the person you know, maybe it's the software tools that you know all about. Like if you could be that person that just always has solutions or you always know someone, that is worth a lot, particularly if you have those human connections that are really valuable, it's worth a lot. So I want you to start putting that together for yourself. Have your own like project manager toolkit, right? That you can come onto any project prepared with. And it also helps you. Like if you could start to put that together, it helps you become more confident because even though you don't always have all the answers, you have the appropriate resources to find those answers. You know who to go to and you're empowered with uh, that knowledge really and those tools to figure it out. That's worth a lot, not only for your confidence, but for the people that you work with. Okay, and my third tip sounds pretty simple, but it really requires a lot more from us. And that is to be a good steward of your projects. Now, being a good steward goes beyond just caring about delivering on time and on budget because we wanna make sure we do a good job or we really want that raise or promotion. Like that stuff should already be happening. We should care about those things anyway. But being a good steward goes pretty deep, like to our core. And being a good steward means that we have a great respect for the responsibility that has been entrusted to us. And that is the responsibility to care for this project. Now, when was the last time you thought of your projects like this? Kind of like a baby, I guess, <laughs> which I suppose could get a little unhealthy. But being a good steward is all about having a great respect for that responsibility, the responsibility of the project and the different pieces that come along with it. Because along with the project comes the responsibility for a budget. That's someone's money that we have responsibility for. And we should have a great respect for that. That's someone's time. That's a lot of people's time that uh, we have partial responsibility for. That is also a really big deal. And if you work in startup, uh, you see this a lot more closely. And it's a responsibility for a person's idea or people's ideas. And like I say, if you're working in startup, you're often in close close proximity to the founder and you know that their ideas are often very near and dear to their heart. So having a great respect for that um, not only shows in how you present yourself to your team and how you manage your projects, but it's also going to help you. It's going to help you in terms of um, having finding the right balance with your projects and finding joy in the work that you do. And that's really important for us to have that, to have that joy. And if we ever get to the point where our projects are taking more from us than we are getting from them, then there's a problem and we really need to address that. If it gets to the point where you can't be a good steward for whatever reason, that's a red flag for you personally, uh, which we could talk about in a later video. But what I want you to think about is being a good steward of your projects, what that means to you, how you can start to think in those terms, because I'm telling you, like, this is the one thing that will make you stand out. Like, you will just be noticed and known if you could be a good steward. People won't be able to put their finger on it all of the time, but they will want to work with you because of it. So think about that one. Those are my three tips for you. Let me know if that was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye.